Hi, welcome back to our Trash to Treasure series. I'm Mindy Turner with the New Mexico State University Cooperative Extension Service. This is the second part in our four part series on taking everyday items and instead of throwing them in the trash or putting them in the recycle bin, turning them into some type of a functional item that you can, can continue and use. And as we mentioned last time, things like that the kids can work on, projects they can do, things that you might could give as gifts that are very inexpensive and easy to put together and dress things up just a little bit. Uh, but also just that taking a little time for yourself and doing a little self-care, making a craft, relieving some stress and relaxing that way for your mental health is a good deal. So today we're gonna talk about those catalogs and magazines that we all get sometimes, they just show up around the house. And sometimes I can't even figure out exactly where they came from, but they just appear. So this is some things that you can utilize those for. Uh, and then like I said, some of them are great for gifts, for gift giving, uh, or just using up all of those old magazines. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, this is a very simple woven basket, okay? It's just made out of magazine pages. Actually, what I have is mostly old catalog pages. So you take the staples out, pull it apart so that you have individual sheets. Then what you're gonna do with those sheets is cut them into strips. Now what I have found works best for the basket is if you do about a two inch strip, and then you can see which way you wanna fold it based on the colors and what you have with it. So I like all of these dark colors on this side, just more colorful than the other side. So I'm gonna fold in, fold it in half so that it is, I'm trying to line my edges up and get it semi straight. It's the other nice thing about this, if you don't fold it exactly straight, you're still probably gonna be okay. So fold it in half with those colors to the outside. Then I'm gonna open it and fold my edges into the crease. Once I do that, okay, edges into the crease, I can just fold it back in half so that all of my raw edges are to the inside. Okay, so another little tip that can be very helpful, we have pretty sharp creases. I did it mostly with my nail, but you can take, this is just a letter opener, a butter knife, whatever you have on hand that's easy to make those creases good and sharp. And then depending how much time you wanna take something that will probably help you later. You can take, um, let's, I have some glue dots or a double-sided tape or just a good old glue stick and just put enough to keep this shut so that as you start, because these obviously are the pieces we're gonna weave to make the basket, to keep it folded and laying nice and flat for you. Okay, so I have several here that I've already folded. And to start the bottom, you can, if you have the dexterity to hold it all and the patience to just hold it and put it together on a flat surface, that's fantastic. I found out that I didn't, so I researched a little what are some tips and some good ways to do it. So one of the things I found was using a clipboard. So this is just a plain old standard clipboard. I cut a card as to how far, how long I wanted my sides to be and how deep I wanted the bottom to be. So this card, it's three inches down and then about four and three eighths across because that's about how many uh, pieces laid across there. And so then I've just lined up all of my strips that I folded and clipped them on the clipboard to hold them together and hold them in place and help me stay on task measured. So then I can start with the weaving part. So what we're gonna do is just take one of our strips and do the good old over and under. Now this is, again, this is the simple part because it's flat. And we're gonna do it until we get a pretty good size square. Now that's gonna depend on how big you want your basket to be. Now when you get really good, obviously, you can shape your baskets, you can do round ones or make them more of a rectangle. I started with square because it was easy for me to see it and to pull it together. Okay, so when you do this one started under, over, under, over. So my next one, I'm gonna go back across 
and I'm going to go over under so that it's the opposite. And it's going to start to lock your pieces in place. So I want to try to get it kind of even. I am more of an eyeballer than a measurer. So I'm going to look at it and try to see, okay, yes, my two sides are coming together. They're about the same. We're good. You continue to do that pattern to whatever width you want for your basket. Once you get your bottom weight in there, you're going to start on the sides. To do the sides, you're going to fold up fold up your edges all the way around so that they're going to stick up. And then you're going to do exactly what we just did here, but you're going to do it going up. So in and out, in and out, in and out. Probably to do a basket this size that I'm doing, I had to take two strips and I just took a little bit of tape and hooked them together so that I had a longer piece. That made it all the way around my basket. You can use, again, a stapler, double-sided tape, a little glue dot, that once you get around the basket, to hold it in place so they don't slide up and down and you can continue to move. So as you go, like I said, you're gonna continue working your way up your basket with the in and out. But eventually, you're gonna get to the top and you're gonna go, okay, now what? Okay, it's actually kind of cute and rustic with all these little pieces sticking out. Uh, the problem with that is it's still loose. And so it would be very easy for it to come apart. So you're gonna decide when you get here how you want to finish your basket. There's a couple different ways you can do that. You can cut these down even and run glue in between so that it stays. You can, if your pieces are long enough, depending on how you've done it, you can tuck, hope you can see that one, you can tuck it down and under so that it locks underneath. Just fold it over and put it under that top rail so they lock underneath. You can take your fun tape like we talked about last time and run a row right around the top or take another strip and this time instead of folding it in quarters, Maybe just fold it in half, or you can do it in quarters if you want a smaller uh, finish around the top. And just like you would do around the edge of a quilt or a blanket, you're gonna put glue on that and run it all the way around to finish off that top edge. So we have a lot of options as to how you wanna finish and do your basket, okay? Very cute. You can pick um, colors that all go together. You can have a hodgepodge of things. You can see I just had a mix of pages out of a catalog. And then you can use this, fill it with something fun, with candy or cookies, and give it as a gift. Throw it on your sewing table to put your scraps in, uh, something simple like that. It's just cute and fun, and like I said, can spend a little more time. If you want to make it a little sturdier, you can take a sealant glue, like a Mod Podge or something similar, brush that on there and let it dry, and then it will be a little more solid. Okay, so the basket is one thing. We also have a woven coaster. The difference with the coaster is going to be that you're going to take wider pieces. These are actually made from what's essentially half of a catalog page, but you fold it the same way that we just did for the basket. And then once you do that, you fold them in half. And this is what's actually going to weave together to make the coaster. Okay, and then same thing. You can finish it off with some sealer, spray acrylic, something like that. Take your tape, go around the edges, make it a little more decorative. If you plan ahead and use the pages, uh, for instance, I had several pages that were sunflowers. Could have used all sunflower pages and I would have had all those yellows and matching colors within my coaster. So you can think about how you want that to come together. Okay, um, then we also can make gift bags. Gift bags are fun, they're easy to give gifts and things, but they can also add up quickly and become very expensive. So utilizing some catalog pages is a great way to make a fun gift bag that you can give, particularly if you have a friend who does like independent sales, consulting sales, and they give you catalogs for their products. Now you can use pages out of that catalog 
to make a special gift bag for them. Or if you're the person doing those sales and you wanna give out samples or special gifts to your customers, you can use those catalog pages and have something individualized for your business. For the purpose of this one, this was just a random page I pulled out and you can see, just made a, a nice little gift bag. This one, I actually had quite a few magazines, things with horses in them. So I wanted these horses to be on the front. So that's where I started. When you make your bag, the key thing is that your front and your back be the same size and your two sides be the same size. In order to do that, you're probably going to end up with some leftover. That's good. We want that to make the tab on the end. So like I said, for this one, I started with my horses and seeing where they laid and then used that to determine where my folds would be and measured it off. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out how big you want them to be. And I went ahead and used a Sharpie on my fold lines to get you a better idea. So you can see this is about six and a half inches, an inch and a half wide, six and a half inches, an inch and a half, and then what's left over here for my flap. You're gonna wanna fold the top down to finish off that edge, make it a little sturdier, and fold the bottom up. Again, that's gonna give you a little more heft at the bottom of your bag. Go ahead and glue this down for sure the top uh, it's up to you the bottom depending on how heavy your pages are if you want to go ahead and glue it or if you want to just wait until you get it folded in because it can make it bulkier when you try to fold up the bottom of your bag okay but so once you've determined your sizes you make your folds and then we're gonna pull it up so that it comes together so that this tab, this leftover piece, and you can do over or under, whichever you prefer. We're gonna put glue on that and stick it down on the side. So now I have a tube, okay? I have a tube that comes together that will actually make the bag. And then all you have to do for the bottom, you fold it just like you're wrapping a present. You're gonna push the sides in to make your triangles, apply some glue, whatever kind you prefer, if it's a glue stick, a glue dot, whatever that happens to be, and make the bottom. And then you can always add a piece of poster board or cardboard or something if you want it to be a little sturdier. Add some tissue paper. You can then either fold and tuck the top, fold it over like a lunch sack, or you can see how we've done on this one. Take a hole punch, punch the holes, run some ribbon through, and make your handles. Okay. So pretty simple, kind of fun. The hardest part is determining where you want your folds to be. Then it actually comes together pretty quickly. Okay, and so the final project, and I definitely want to show you how this works because it took me a while to grasp the, the rolling part to make the bow. So this is just a very simple gift bow. Okay, I'm hoping with the lights that you can see that. Okay, just like you would purchase out of ribbon. So when you get your Christmas catalogs that have all the red and green stuff in them, or if you're working on a baby gift and you get one that has those pages with all the great uh, baby looking, baby items and baby kind of colors, and you wanna fold that up to make your gift bow, uh, that's a great way to personalize things. And again, it's kind of fun, save some money to do it. So the key is with these is you're gonna wanna make these little tubes, looks like two cones put together, right? So we take our pages and you're gonna wanna have some strips that are the full length, some strips that are you know an inch to two inches shorter, and then just your little leftover piece to make the middle. And you can see if you receive our newsletter, the instructions exactly how to do that, where to cut is in there. If you don't receive our newsletter and you would like to, you can call our office or you can go to our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu. Click on Family Health and Wellness, and there's a place there to request a newsletter. You can choose to get that through email or as a hard copy. We'd be glad to share that with you if you would like it. It does have the instructions for all of the projects that we showcase during the video series. So for this, like I said, the, the trick is to get that cone shape. And when you talk about folding it, and yeah, you could fold it like this and eventually get a bow looking thing and you could make a, a simpler bow, right, out of your pages. But if you want that type of a gift bow, hold it where you're, it's, you know, you're looking at the flat part 
and you kind of want to roll both hands at the same time so that you come up with that cone piece. And then the easiest way, you can use glue dots, double-sided tape. The easiest way I found to do it and hold everything is just pop a staple in there in the middle, okay? So then you want to do the other side, and you may have to turn it several times. Every time I do it, I have to kind of mess with it to make sure I get my stuff turned the right way because I want both edges to come to the middle, okay, to make the cone. Once you've done this, you're going to have, again, your long ones and your shorter ones. Then you start to layer them together. Kind of how big your strips are and how they come together is going to determine how many you need. Okay, because on the, the base of this one is three. The base of this one, probably two is plenty. So I'm going to do two more of the short-sided ones and they will layer in here. And then for that last little short piece, you're just going to roll it into a little tube to insert right here. And that's just to cover up your staples and all your middle piece where you've been sticking everything together. So super simple, lots of ideas, lots of fun things out there that you can do with leftover catalogs, with leftover magazines, keep from filling up your trash bin quite so quick, uh, or having to make all those runs to the recycle to get rid of that stuff. Again, I'm Mindy Turner with the Cooperative Extension Service in Curry County. This has been the second installment of Trash to Treasure. We have two more to go, so I hope you'll join us. Uh, for the next one, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service. Thank you.